Hey guys, in this chapter, we're going to cover what causes you to get blocked from sending cold emails and how to set up your email account so you don't get blocked. Let's get started. Hey guys, Mike from MailStand here. Welcome to course number two in our cold email school. Today, we're going to talk about what causes you to get blocked from sending cold emails, right? Um, and, and really just how to prevent them. And then we're also going to walk through exactly how to set up your Google Workspace mailbox so that you have really high deliverability and you don't get blocked. Uh, and the best part is through MailStand, you'll be able to create multiple ones of these so you can scale up your cold email system uh, to send thousands of emails a day. So what causes you to get blocked from sending cold emails? It's really kind of four bullet points. The first is bad email reputation. Uh, the next is sending just bad emails in general, um, bad email copy, it's not to the right audience, things like that, bad email infrastructure, and then not warming up your records. So when I talk about bad email reputation, really the way that we look at it is every inbox that you have, it has an IP address assigned to it. Everything from every email provider that looks, it looks at that IP address. Um, and so really the way that we look at it is that IP address has a score of zero. If you send an email and it gets a positive reply, you can look at that as maybe adding a plus one or plus two to your score. Now, um, you know, if you get an email open or an email click, you, you're getting these plus ones and slowly your reputation is going up. Now, if your email gets deleted immediately, that might be a minus one. But the biggest issue is if your email gets marked as spam, you can look at that as like a minus 20. Um, you know, every email provider is different. So, you know, when I say minus 20, it could literally be minus 2000 on a scale. Nobody really knows that's part of the issue with this is, you know, your email account might get blocked and it could be for a variety of those four reasons. But um, generally speaking, you want to be improving your email reputation over time, meaning sending good one-on-one -on -one emails, making sure you have like an unsubscribe link so that they're actually unsubscribing from your email instead of marking a spam, right? Unsubscribing from an email doesn't affect your email reputation score. It's actually providing an unsubscribe link is the proper way to do things so that people, um, you know, are, are able to just not get uh, reached out to again. So that's proper kind of legal cold email 101. That's what you should be doing. And so the best way to improve your email reputation is to warm up your inbox. So we use a tool called warmupinbox.com. There are also a bunch of other tools out there that, that you can you can take a look at. But basically warming up your mailbox takes that score and automatically helps increase it while you're sending cold email. So you know, you always want to have that keeping on in the background so that, um, you know, you're always improving that score so that it never gets kind of below zero in, in this kind of example that I provided. So that's step one. Uh, step two is sending bad cold emails, right? So if, if you send an email um, and it is, you know, about Viagra or pornography, something where it's very clearly obvious that you should not necessarily be blasting that out to a bunch of people. Um, there are keywords and flags within every email provider where if they see that, sometimes it's even a one strike policy. We've seen customers where they send an email and they're blocked within two to five emails and it's because the email provider is literally looking at the email and saying, nope, that, that's just not good. Like we already have seen enough and you don't need to send it anymore. So you wanna send good one-on-one -on -one personalized emails to people that actually would like to receive an email, right? So if I am selling a software product and it relates to marketers, I might send emails specifically to VP of marketing, right? I might not send it to somebody who works in real estate and in the loan office, right? These are very different kind of departments where one might actually buy your product and another one might not. So you really want to hone in on your list hone in on your email copy and just by doing those basic things of adding an unsubscribe link, knowing who you're reaching out to, not like, you know, a lot of people say mass blast, like even MailStand helps send out cold emails at scale, but you do want to have some sort of personalization to every single email so that when they get it, they know that they're not just kind of a blanket 
email, right? Um, and so that, again, so that that email does not get marked as spam. So one thing that nobody talks about that is wildly, wildly important, right? You might see all these tutorials online where they say, hey, send six follow-up emails. That could be like the worst possible thing. So at MailStand, what we do is we send one email that's an initial email and then one follow-up. So only two emails in our sequence. Um, and that is mainly so that we don't get a bad email reputation, right? So think about it from the recipient side. If you get an email, okay, you see the email, you're not interested, you might delete it. Um, the second one, you might actually you know, see it again and, and hit on unsubscribe, right? But if you send six back to back saying, hey, did you see this following up, bumping this up in your, your inbox, like that person has seen your email probably a couple times and is going to be very upset. And at that point, they're just gonna be angry and mark your email as spam. And as I mentioned, that just immediately brings your score down. And, and literally the last thing you wanna do is be able to mark as spam because there's a feedback loop from every single one of these email providers so that they know that it's being marked as spam. So um, you just really want to make sure that you have, are sending good emails in the proper way. So you got good reputation by warming up your mailbox. You're sending good emails. The final kind of pillar is your email infrastructure. And that is what we're going to walk through on our screen share in the next video uh, of part of our course. We're going to walk you through exactly how to set up um, your Google Workspace account. We selected Google Workspace just because um, it's easier for this tutorial. We're also going to create another one for DinoSend later on. That's a new email provider that helps, um, you know, just specifically with cold emailers. It's a new mailbox out there. But for this tutorial, we're going to show you how to do it with Google Workspace. But this is the case for any kind of email provider you use, whether it's Microsoft, Zoho, um, and Google Workspace. It, it could be anything. There's even something with Namecheap that, that, that you can use as well. But Really, you just want to have a good email infrastructure, which means um, going into your DNS settings, and, and we'll explain that in the next video, how and, and what to do there. But basically, you want to set up a, a SPF record, a DKIM record, a DMARC record, um, and you even want to construct your email account to be legitimate. You want to have a beautiful email signature that's text-based only. Um, you want to have images within the, the email providers so that when you send an email, your face is actually showing up instead of kind of like a blue button with an, and your initial behind it. Um, there are basic things within your email infrastructure you want to set up so that uh, when you're actually sending out the email, the person who's receiving it gets the signature marks on the email so that they add it to the, their inbox when they're receiving it versus the spam box. And so sometimes even if you don't set up your infrastructure, they'll just immediately block it. And again, if your email starts to get blocked, it's kind of just an infinite loop. So kind of going back to the beginning of the video, if your email gets marked as spam, your score starts to go down. But if your email gets blocked, that also starts to go down as well. So um, really there are just a couple of basic checklists to do so that your infrastructure set up so that when you actually send an email, it says that you're sending from yourself. And it's basically a signature behind the code of the email that says, you know, yes, I'm Mike Benson. I'm sending this email. I have approved this email. Um, you know, please accept it within your mail server. That's like the proper way to look at it. So finally, once you have all that set up, um, really like the best way to send emails without getting blacklisted, uh, specifically for Google Workspace, is to send maybe between 50 and 200 emails per day. And you wanna use a cold email tool that slowly drips those out every day. Um, so for example, MailStand does this where you'll send, you'll just set it up, you, you drag and drop your list and it'll say, okay, I just uploaded a thousand contacts, MailStand, drip this out every three minutes over the next seven days, right? And only send it on weekdays and not weekends and not at night, right? So mail stand specifically here to help you just kind of dole that out. And then we also check to make sure your email inbox is set up properly before actually sending these emails. And so if you're sending through a cold email tool like mail stand and you're only sending about 50 to 200 emails per day per mailbox, um, and you set up everything that we're gonna tell you in this next video, you will be all set to start sending cold email properly and you will not get blocked.
Thanks so much for joining and scroll down on the course and we will show you exactly how to set up everything uh, from your email infrastructure for Google Workspace.